For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. It's simple. You're going to die. And the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And if you die without Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will end up in hell. If you're to put your faith in trust and be washed by the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, and take that final breath, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Your only hope after death is to put your faith and belief in Jesus Christ. I did not say religion. I did not say science. To be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ is not Christian. It's not a religion. A Christian is one that has been washed by God, Jesus Christ. The finished work upon the cross, upon the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to the scripture, and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That is not religion. Religion is, look what you do, look what I do, look what you can do, do this, do that, do it on a certain day, do it with this on a holiday, take this, don't take that. That's religion. Religion is bad made, but Jesus Christ is God approved. And you're not going to walk up to God and say, hey, look, I'm a Baptist. There are no Baptists in heaven. Well, look, God, Mary. Mary cannot get you into heaven. Well, God, I, I slain infidels in the blood of Allah, and Allah cannot get you to heaven because Allah is not God. Well, Lord, look, I'm of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and without the Messiah, Jesus Christ, you will be cast off into the lake of fire that burneth forever. Oh, Lord, I'm a product of evolution, the Big Bang. That's not a God. That's not the God. That's nothing. I mean, scientists will tell you from nothing, the Big Bang. So if you have nothing, you'll get nothing but hell when you die. Oh, Lord, I said this prayer. Saying a prayer is not going to get you into heaven. Lord, this I gave money, charities. I gave money to a church. I gave money to a telethon. You can't buy your way into heaven. Lord, I was a member of this organization. Membership cannot get you into heaven. God of 32 degrees and went to lodge meeting and went to the meetings and I drove around a little car and I helped out people. Works cannot get you to heaven. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So when Jesus says he is the way, there is no access to God except by him. You can throw religion and science and education and thoughts into the lake of fire that burns forever because that's where it's going to end up. You say, well, pastor, preacher, whatever you are up there, you got your religion and I got mine. No, I don't have a religion. Let's get things straight. I'm a Bible-believing, born-again Christian.
Christian, that is not a religion. That is a position with God, with my name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life by Jesus Christ himself. That's not a religion. In the Bible, for salvation, God tells me to do nothing for salvation. It has been all finished by Jesus Christ. Everything that needs to be done to be saved, to get to heaven, has been done by Jesus. And if you do anything else but believe on Jesus Christ, you are adding to salvation an artificial preservative which God will not allow into heaven. Mary is an artificial additive to salvation that does not taste well with God. You go to Mass. Well, this dropped the M. Masses of people end up in a, in a lake of fire that burns forever. The Bible says many will go the broad way that leadeth to destruction, but few will go through the straight gate that leads into eternal life. I can this morning, I can kick all your religions and all your beliefs. Not because I'm mean, not because I'm obnoxious, not because uh, I don't know nothing, but I can kick all your beliefs and all your religions by two words. Jesus Christ. And that the fact is that Jesus says as far as what you believe that is outside the Bible belief, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. He said, well, I was baptized. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I'm a Jehovah Witness. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you, and you didn't even know who I was. You see this King James Bible I hold in my hand? You got to do what the Bible tells you to do. Oh, men wrote the Bible not like the Bible that God the Holy Spirit wrote. I'll take it for granted that man has wrote the Bible. The NIV, the New King James, good news from those were written by man. And yet the King James Bible has been written by the Holy Spirit with man being the, the pen and the ink being the blood of God. And the Bible says, for salvation, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. There is nowhere in the Bible that says, be baptized for your salvation, to be baptized for you to go to heaven. Oh, that's 238. Are you Jewish? Have you just lived within a year after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus? Have not all the apostles died now? Are we not gone from one point in the book of Acts to another point? Have we not gone from Jewish to Gentile in the book of Acts? When you base your faith in your church on the book of Acts, you are on shaky ground. That'd be like me to say, I'm going to build a glass house on side of a cliff in California during earthquake season. And yet Jesus said, a sure foundation for the winds, for the storm, is a man that has built his foundation on the word of God. A firm, sure salvation by the word of God, John chapter 1, verse 1.
And I don't need to hear your excuses and your ways. But if you were to say, Preacher, I've got this. Preacher, I've done that. Preacher, I am. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And Jesus said that. You take your doctrinism, you take your baptism, you take your mass, you take your magazines, you take your perverted Bibles, you take your church, you take your pastor, you take everything and throw it in the lake of fire because that cannot save your soul. Only by the testimony of the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures if you were to put your heart faith in that to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved that will get you into heaven I'm going to hit lodges and I'm going to hit religion and I'm going to hit the education Now, by Jesus Christ am I saved that the Bible says these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Now, let me hit your public school system that has removed the Bible, that has removed God, and you can't pray in the school system. Well, you see, millions and billions of years ago, we came from our monkey uncle. And we have transformed, though we can't find it from bones to bones to bones, and here we are today. And as apes, we have pride rogue to us that we have lost our fur. And we are in one big banana tree trying to kill the other monkeys for that one banana. And that's why your school system today, they're killing each other because you have taught them the survival of the fittest. And now you're crybaby because you don't have God, you don't have the Bible, and you have to preach it and the teaching of, of, of Adolf Hitler and all his namesakes under the name of Darwinism. The fruit of the school shootings today is by taking God and the Bible out and putting it in with revolution. And you're only going to see more and more tragedies in your schools because you will not bring God and the Bible and Jesus Christ back. Celebrate your Darwinism by graves. And yet, the Bible says surety, blessedness, hopefulness, love, Joy, peace, patience comes by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes by you believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. At that moment, you get the Holy Spirit by being saved by the finished work of Jesus Christ. And then you become adopted into God's family. For God so loved the world For God so loved the world That love in John 3:16 is past tense There is no love of God when you reject Jesus Christ He that has the Son has everlasting life, John 3, 36. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. How can you say that God loves people in hell? That stupid thing that God hates to sin, but hate, but loves the sinner, why does he cast them off into hell? Because they have rejected his son. They have said no to his son. They have said no to God for salvation by being bruised, by being beaten, by being nailed to that cross. God, I have something better. There is no love. If you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no love of God in your life. 
the Bible says in John 3, 6, John chapter 3, the wrath of God, condemnation to those that have not believed. And that goes for your religion. That goes for your whatever you are relying on that is not Jesus Christ. The Bible states, what must I do to be saved? Saved from what? Hell. The wrath of God. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You're not going to approach God with what you think is better for you. You're going to irritate God. Because let me tell you something about God in the great white throne judgment. You're going to stand before Jesus one day. Jesus is God. Prepare to meet that God. And the one that suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the God you're going to stand before when you're judged. And you're going to say... <laughs> Blessed Mary, full of grapes, I took part in the Mass. Excuse me, Lord. And God, with the nail-pierced hands, is going to say, that's not good enough. See that? You see what I've done? See the nail-pierced hands? Your religion didn't do that. Your education didn't do that. Your religion and your education is not God. I am God, Jesus. You're the sinner. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. How are you going to come up to God as a Baptist, as a Catholic, as a Episcopalian, as a scientist, or whatever you come up with? How do you think you're going to be safe with God when you don't come up with God's plan of salvation? There's a big difference, folks. Religion is man-made, but God, Jesus Christ, is God-approved. Listen, there is a thing that when the gospel's being preached to you, this message has been approved by God. When the gospel's being preached to you that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again, there's a message at the bottom of this message about the gospel that this is Jesus Christ. God does not take check, He does not take money, and He does not take works to get into heaven. Unless I see the blood. The only way for God to let you in is through the blood of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. you got to have the Lamb of God. You cannot have man to save you. You cannot have man's ways to save you. Man and his instruction cannot get you right with God. The love of God to be put into your life, to be added to your life, to be adopted into your life, has to be by the finished work of God, Jesus Christ. It's that plain and simple. I'm here to tell you without Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. If man can say go to hell, imagine when God tells you to go to hell. And you say, well, preacher, I don't like that. You're too loud, blah, 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 blah. I've heard all excuses. 
and you're going to stand before God one day as the loser. And then when I say loser, I mean you're going to stand in the presence of God whatever you believe outside of Jesus Christ, and you will end up in the lake of fire as that's a loser. What happens when someone's house burns down, and Lord forbid that a house burns down, I mean, it's tragic. Everything is lost. When someone's house is destroyed by fire, it's lost. There may be some trinkets left, but it's lost. And when God casts you off into the lake of fire, it's lost. The only trinket that you have will be your eternal soul being in torments, being tormenting and tormented for all eternity. And there is no relief in hell. Your relief from the fires of hell is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. What must I do to be saved from that burning judgment of God? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. There is no other salvation. There is no other way but that of Jesus. Listen, if you want to believe what you want to believe, we're in America, go ahead. But my question is, whatever you are believing, whatever you are trusting, my question is, why did God leave heaven, come down, and suffer and die, and get nailed to the cross? If, it, if God will allow with what you believe. If God were to say, okay, it's okay. Then why did God suffer? Why did God get nailed to that cross? Why did God become 100% God and 100% man for three, 33 and a half years? Why didn't he just let religion go if it's okay? And yet, let me explain something to you about the Bible. Jesus, who is God, who suffered and died on that cross for our iniquities, was nailed to that cross by the religion of his time. The priest that God made through the Levites, that God established in his law by Moses, the one tribe of Levi to be the priest of the nation of Israel, under God, they are the ones that took Jesus and nailed him to that cross. That's what religion will do. Oh, you say, preacher, I'm a Catholic. Have you not read history what Catholics have done to Bible believers? They have nailed them to crosses. They have burned them. They have put them on stakes. They have tortured them. In the name of the Mass. Islam is a religion not of peace but of death in the name of Allah. But a Christian, a born again Christian will not rely on weapons or torture. He will rely on the sword of the Spirit, the Bible, the King James Bible and preach the gospel though being tortured by religions. And if you look into your history, major religions, whoever they are, have in one point in their life of their history, have tortured and persecuted and killed Christians in the name of religion. That's not taught in the public schools. That's not even taught in churches. 
I'll tell you what churches teach in 2018. There's an Easter bunny and he leaves eggs in our churchyard. Go find him. And you're going to say, well, what's wrong with America? And the congregation of those churches will come up to a street preacher and say, Jesus would not ever do that. You're turning the people away. And I say to you, you have never read your Bible. You've never studied your Bible. You're an idiot. Shut up, sit down, and let the Bible be preached. What made America great was the great awakening, the great revivals that came through this country by street preachers in the Bible. Spoken about by Benjamin Franklin and our founding fathers of the Constitution that made claim and truth to street preachers and the fabulous work of God. As such, we have in 2018 in Daytona Beach, you have street preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only difference we have between them and now is the fact is you will not turn and repent and get right. At all. We are in the dark, dismal days of America. going to have a revival. There will be no revival in America when the streets of Daytona Beach won't come out and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There will be no revival when the preacher preaches the gospel and by the word of God and you mock and ridicule and scorn. There will be no revival. And there will be no revival when the churches are celebrating Christmas and celebrating the Easter Bunny and mocking the Bible themselves. There will be no revival. And if you check the Bible in Revelation chapter 3, the church is making God sick. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. And many of you Christians are making God sick. Because you are not doing what the Bible has told you to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that shall be saved. And go in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, we're having a church bazaar. Isn't that bizarre to have a church bazaar? You know what Jesus did when they had a bazaar in the temple? He went in there and kicked them tables down and made a court and scattered all around. They got upset. The money's on the floor. And the, and the religion came up to Jesus and said, what give you this right to do this? I'm God, this is my house, get out. And yet churches had, oh, we have a CDs for sale, we have calendars for sale, you have cookies for sale, we'll have a cookie sale, but no part of Jesus Christ. That makes God sick, that's religion, that's not God approved. Last weekend, oh, our church is going to have an Easter bunny hunt and eggs and everything. That makes God sick. That's not the blood of Jesus Christ. You cannot find the Easter bunny in the Bible, but you can find that Jesus saves and only Jesus saves. Approved by God. The gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You see, last week we got to pick on the atheists. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It was April 1st. Today I'm preaching on religions. And what you think that you will be saved in, you will not. You'll be cast off with your religion in a place called the lake of fire that burneth forever. You've got to have Jesus Christ as your Savior. You've got to have God to wash away your sins. That is done upon the finished work of the gospel that Jesus died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now let me mock your religion again with the gospel. Okay? 
Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. Many men have died, and some have su suffered. But they did not die according to the scriptures. Preachers, rabbis, priests, preacherettes, prophets in America have died, and some of them have died under persecution. I think of a, of a world famous black man that just recently, I'm not going to mention no names if he got milk, persecuted and died, but not according to scriptures. And they buried Jesus. And when you take a man that has died, you bury him for obvious reasons. You don't want him hanging out in your living room. He does, you don't want a dead man in your pulpit, though the Bible says if you got a dead church, you got a dead pulpit by Satan. But you bury the dead person. Now here's the difference between your religion and Jesus Christ. There is death, there is burial. Your religion is still in the grave. My Jesus Christ, three days and three nights later, came out of that grave. The Bible proclaims by the angels, He is not here, He is risen, according to the Scriptures. Now, faith and belief in the Gospel of Jesus Christ is not religion. It's God-honored, God-approved, and God-accepted. While whatever man, whatever you want it to be, is still in the grave. That's religion, and that's Jesus Christ. Now, do you want a dead person in a grave to supply your needs to heaven? Or do you want God that has been resurrected three days and three nights and is alive according to Acts chapter 1 and is seated at the right hand of God right now? Would you rather put your faith and trust in that than a religion that's still buried in the ground? You know what Achim did with his religion? He buried it in the ground. And Joshua, oh, 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 Lord God, thank you very much. And Joshua unburied that God and put it in flames of fire to be burned. Joshua, Jehovah saves. Jesus, Jehovah saves. I'm here to tell you, if you believe on religion, you do not have any hope. Your religion is dead. And Jesus Christ is alive. Your religion has no merit with God. And the merit of Jesus Christ is that he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And he arose the third day according to the scriptures. That's life. That's hope. There is no hope in the Pope. He just said there is no hell. How foolish. That shows he's never read his Bible. Because Jesus spoke about hell. Jesus told us who made hell and what hell was for. And that idiot in, in Italy doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to the Bible. Honestly, I think he's going Jehovah Witness on you. I don't know. He seems to have the same views as Jehovah Witnesses, which is just as damning as anything else. Oh, you're mean today. You're picking on my religion. 
better me pick on it than God to cast you and it into hell. Why don't you check your Bible with your religion? Why don't you do what the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God? Why don't you check your religion with the King James Bible? I've seen more people come out of the religion by reading the Bible than reading any magazine. I have seen people got right by God by reading their Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish to have everlasting life. There is no everlasting life outside of Jesus Christ. You will face the judgment and wrath of God forever without Jesus Christ. Whatever you're believing in, if it's not Jesus, you're not safe. For Jesus is the gift of God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no access to the Father except by Jesus Christ. And the Bible says so. And there is no love of God when you reject Jesus Christ. For the love of God is past tense. And that love does not continue until you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That is all. Only Jesus saves. That's it. That is the message every week. Jesus saves and only Jesus saves. Baptists don't get into heaven. Scientists don't get to go to heaven. Except they put their faith and belief by their heart in the finished work of God, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Thank you. One of the most terrifying words in the Bible is when Jesus says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And before that verse, the Bible said, Well, Lord, didn't we do this? Lord, look at what this. Oh, Lord God, I did this. Lord, didn't we do this? And he says, that's iniquity. It's not approved. I would hate to belong to a church my entire life and come to the end of my life and find out I did not please God. And yet that's happened. There is probably a funeral today that will be planned for someone who through their entire life gave their life for a church, for a denomination, and have woken up in, in the gates of hell for all eternity. I know that's happened. And there are people who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and have died. And to be absent from the body, and they are now present with the Lord. To get to heaven, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. 